All right, let's take a look at the Bronco. Hey, what's up everyone? Alex Buy Stuff. I haven't made a video in a long time, and today's the day that the Bronco showed up, and I think it's time to make a video. Uh, yeah, this is my fourth time at making this video, and I keep getting phone calls and neighbors driving by that want to talk about the Bronco, and I hate making videos all clipped and weird, because I'm weird like that. So this is number four, and I'm gonna make this video faster, so you waste less of your time, but I want to mention, I've had this GT500 for like six months or something like that, and I haven't made a video about it. So I've been snaking everyone. It's great. The summary of the review of the GT500. Buy it. It's great. That's it. Um, I've also become a Ford fanboy overnight by accident because I have a Raptor, a Bronco, and a GT500. So make fun of me, whatever, but uh, not really a Ford fanboy. Also, garage update very quickly. I sold my 2019 911 GT3 RS. Um, and I sold my 20, oh, sorry, 2006 Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution. Those are gone. And I'm sure other cars will be joining within the next year. But this is a good start right here. Uh, so I ordered this car a long time ago. I've talked about it in previous YouTube videos. It's here. It is a 2021 Ford Bronco two-door base in velocity blue with zero options. Literally not one option. So I'm that weird guy that just said I had a $200,000 supercar and now have a zero option Bronco, which is like the opposite direction. And that's because I don't really need all the off-road stuff that makes these cars get really expensive. If I wanted to go off-roading, which I like to do, but I barely ever go because I'm busy, I would probably take the Raptor if I was gonna do that. So um, I could still off-road in this. It could still off-road if I wanted to. Um, that being said, that means that this car was only like 29,000 in some change because there's no options on it. Um, and that's and I'm, I'm actually really happy about how i ordered it so far from the time i've spent with it uh so basics here this has the 2.3 liter four cylinder turbocharged motor eco boost it makes 300 horsepower 325 foot pounds of torque there is a different motor available in the bronco at the moment which is a bigger 2.7 liter four cylinder motor which is also an eco boost turbocharged motor and that one makes 330 horsepower and 415 foot-pounds of torque. So it makes more power. It's a little bit bigger motor on that one. That's not what I have here. Differences between those two motors. Number one, the more important one to me, was that if you want to get the six-speed manual transmission, which is what I got, you cannot get the bigger motor. So, okay, that's a big thing for me. I automatically didn't want the bigger motor. And the other thing is that there's an asterisk on the power ratings for these two motors. The asterisk says, that the bigger motor with the bigger horsepower is also rated on premium fuel, whereas the smaller motor is rated on regular fuel. So being that this is a turbocharged motor, you might actually get a little bit more power than what they told you, told you you're gonna get if you put premium fuel into this vehicle. That's too, you know, I don't know. There's probably a bunch of things on the internet about that, but that's just my guess. Um, moving on, six-speed manual transmission. We'll talk about that a lot throughout the video because that was probably my most exciting feature of this vehicle. Uh, it does have four wheel drive like every other Bronco, but it is the most basic version of the four wheel drive available. It is a part-time selectable engagement, whereas all other more advanced versions are um, on demand, meaning like, like my Raptor is on demand. That just means that if you wanted to shift into four wheel drive as you're driving with the more advanced version, you can do that. With this version, I believe you need to stop the car, put it in neutral, and then shift. Um, no big deal to me, because I'll probably barely ever be using that option. Uh, this does have the 4.46 uh, rear axle, which is the most basic axle. Not that I'm just going around the back of the car. Not that you can actually see the axle, but um, there are a bunch of other versions that are beefier and locking and blah, blah, blah. Those are great for off-roading. And uh, again, I'm not really doing that, so I didn't opt for that option and elephant in the room is right here these are the 16 inch steel wheels these are ugly in my opinion um i knew they were ugly i didn't want to pay for any of the other wheel options i wanted to pick out my own aftermarket wheels and i'll, I'll maybe i'll make another video after i do that it should be sh should be soon um so they're 16 inch steel they come with bridgestone dueler ht p255 70r16 tires Looks a little bit small, in my opinion, on the car, or the truck, whatever you want to call it. It also looks a little funny, I think, with that. It's kind of an unfinished look on the rail there, the side rail. 
I think I'm gonna have to put like some sort of a sidebar step step bar just to make it look a little bit better. And then I also wanna put a bike rack on the back. Um, so those are probably the only three things I wanna do this car. There may be a fourth though. The fourth would be the headlights. I'm not sure if there's an upgrade. I have to look into this. You guys can sound off in the comments if you already know about it, but I'm not sure if there's a version of the headlight that has this ring light up around the edge. That would be really cool. This is just painted silver. It kind of looks like it would light up, but it doesn't. So I'll actually turn the headlights on for you guys real quick so you can see what I'm talking about. I really like headlights. <laughs> Sounds funny, but I really do. I like fancy LED headlights. And uh, so this is what the headlight looks like on this car. And of course the amber light is blinking because of the frame per second difference or whatever. In real life, that's not blinking, just so you guys know. But yeah, basic LED headlight, nothing really lights up special. I, there must be a fancier version and I'm guessing I could just buy those and upgrade it. And I, I might actually consider doing that, but I also will probably just forget and not care. Um, but was there anything else on the outside I need to talk about? No. That was it. This Oh, this does have the black hardtop that's like the upgraded one that doesn't warp because they had problems with the first version. But let's uh, let's jump in the car and we'll, well, let's do the trunk first. So first of all, the trunk opens really weird. Watch this. Yeah, it's strange. This is also a downhill, so it would be more likely to open more. So yeah, it just has this shock that opens kind of funny and it goes to there, right? And now I'll push it again. And it kind of just, it's kind of like rickety. I don't know, not rickety. I don't know if rickety is the word. It's just strange. It's not a big deal. It's just strange. So decent sized trunk, good for going grocery shopping, not good for transporting stuff. That's really big. You can fold the seats down, but when the seats are folded down, they don't flush with the floor. So you'd have to put things on top of the seats and it wouldn't go like flat. And for some people that wouldn't matter. For some people it would, just mentioning it. I'm probably not gonna be putting the seats down very much because I have my kids in the back. And for me, this is a kid, this is mainly a kid vehicle. So um, yeah, that's pretty much all I have to say about this. You can fit a bunch of, you go to Costco, well, for most trips, depending on how much stuff you're buying, but going to the regular grocery trip is gonna be pretty easy. This also, this was an interesting one for me. This did not come with a tow hitch. Obviously there's a little like kind of cut out there in the bumper to fit one, but it doesn't come with the car. Should be probably pretty cheap and easy to add one if you want. But let's jump in. We'll jump in, let's talk about the seats. Comes with cloth seats. These are really nice in my opinion. They feel great, they're comfortable, they're durable, they're two-tone. There's like a black or a dark gray in the middle and a, a lighter gray on the outside. And I just think they look really nice and they feel great too. Um, oh, before I forget about this part, I love this grab handle. It is so durable and strong. It's hard to explain, it sounds goofy, but it just, it seriously, it's the best grab handle I've ever felt in any car. Um, let's go ahead and fire her up, him up. I don't know if it's, I haven't genderized this car yet, so fire it up. We get the Bronco logo. All right, so this is the Sync 4 8 inch touchscreen display. It has Apple CarPlay, Android Auto. I have an Android phone, so Android Auto is what's showing up. I don't know if it has GPS as an option if you're not connected with your phone. I, I'm curious about that. I, I don't really care, but I don't know if because I'm connected on Android Auto that it doesn't give me the option or if it just doesn't have it because it's the most basic version of the head unit. So another thing that people can sound off in the comments if you guys want to talk about it. Um, but this is really cool. Uh, this has a customizable screen here that you can put different gauges and parameters on. So I already selected my stuff and I don't really know how to go back. There's buttons on the steering wheel here. This is the menu button, that guy right there. And then these buttons up and down, okay, are what you use to scroll through this stuff. And you can go through and you can change different gauges, but basically the gist of it was that I wanted the turbo boost gauge. I wanted to have my RPMs, because I may be shifting with manual transmission, and my speed uh, in dig digitally. So that's what I selected. Here's our six speed manual transmission. It has six speeds, of course, it has reverse and it has a crawl mode for off-roading, pretty cool. Um, you have a collar right here. So you pull that up. If you wanna go into reverse, you need to use that to, to remove, I guess you call it a lockout, I think, to get into reverse. Um, so that's the manual transmission stick, the shifter, I should say. Um, not a whole lot's going on, not a whole lot else going on. Storage options include the 
glove box that's lockable in the center console, which is also lockable. And we've got the back seats, very spacious. I really like them, kids love them, very kid approved. We drove around yesterday with the car. They were super stoked. Um, you've got these big side windows and it gives the kids a really good view of everything going on on the outside of the car. And they really love that. Um, and I think I touched on everything inside the car. I'm just checking my notes. Oh, speakers. Okay, so four speaker system. Uh, we've got one speaker here, one speaker there, and then two in the back, kind of back corners there that are on the bars. So if you have the top off, the speakers are there. They're probably waterproof. I think everything in here is waterproof, so you can take the top off. And um, push button start. It doesn't have a lot of the fancy stuff. It doesn't have like the convenience package stuff where you can like open the doors from the outside, like my like my Mustang or my Raptor. But I don't really need any of that stuff. So that concludes this walk around of the inside and the outside. And the next part of this video, we'll just go take it for a drive and talk about how it drives. All right, so uh, we're gonna try to oh, instant fail, guys. So we are in the Bronco and. Unfortunately, my GoPro was out of battery, so I'm using my cell phone to record the driving portion of this video, which is very difficult because it's stick shift. I'm doing my best. So there's three main things I want to talk about with this car, and I'm basically just driving around in areas that are not very populated. So number one, this turning radius is ridiculous. Look at this. I'm doing circles right now. I am doing circles. This car turns on a dime. I was not expecting this because the two other Ford vehicles I own have the worst turning radius of any vehicles I've ever driven. My Raptor is, it's a truck, so I guess it's a given, right? But my uh, GT500 has really bad turning radius for a sports car. Um, this thing is very nimble. I can't say that it will be this good if you are with uh, use, driving the four-door Bronco. It might be with the longer wheelbase, maybe it won't turn so well, but really good turning. Uh, next thing, this motor, is great uh it has a lot of pop and i was pretty impressed with how peppy it feels uh when you're driving around and you're not going very fast it's it's fine it feels kind of like a you know a honda civic or a toyota camry it's not nothing crazy but once you get that turbo spooling man so i'm gonna i'm gonna kick it right here watch the the boost here on the dashboard I had to uh, shift gears, that's why the phone went away, but I think I saw 20 pounds of boost about. I think it hit about 20 pounds. And it really, when that turbo kicks in, it feels great. Um, so it moves really well. It does feel like a 300 horsepower vehicle. And I'm pretty impressed with this motor. So that leads me to the third item on the list here. And that would be the transmission. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about the transmission. I'm basically re-recording the transmission part of this video because I thought about a couple of little other details that I wanted to bring up. Because um, I think there's going to be a lot of people out there, if you watch this video, that are kind of on the fence about the manual transmission. You know, it's 2021, almost 2022. Is it time to finally say that they've died, etc.? So I'm going to pull over here. Um, this, the little details about this manual transmission, I think are a little bit, would be important to me if I was debating about it. So um, let's talk about the actual throw, for instance, and like the position of everything, because that's to me an important thing that a lot of people don't usually talk about. So I've had some cars that were manual transmission where I felt like where my hand placement was, wasn't a good spot to be shifting gears. My Mitsubishi Lancer Evolution is a good example of that. I wasn't very excited about or happy about the placement with like the cup holder and the armrest it just something about it felt kind of funny to me um this feels really good my arm is resting right here on the armrest and i can shift gears right here without even needing to lift my arm up um so it, it's it's just in a really comfortable position i think i mentioned this earlier but there's a collar here to defeat your uh reverse lockout i believe you probably have to use the collar for uh to defeat to go and do the uh, climbing, I should probably explain that a little better. That means that you have to pull up right here and then there's like a gate, like a hard wall right there. And when you pull up, you can go through the wall and then you can go over to crawl or you can go up to reverse and reverse. You got your, there is a camera. I didn't mention that earlier. You do get a camera with this 
even if you get the cheapest one, which is pretty nice. Um, so I'm really happy with the feel. The height is good. The distance is good. Uh, the middle zone, I don't know what you'd call that, but just the, the neutral area is, took me a little bit of getting used to, but I like it now that I've been driving it. Um, but the it's a little bit skinny i would say it's a little bit skinnier than some of the other cars it's not a problem it's just a note um the as far as like shift points and stuff you know how the gears feel when your rpms are going up and everything like that most people i think the if you're like me you're probably general ball general ball gosh i can't talk i'm sorry the general ballpark that most people shift when just driving normally is between 3,000 and 4,000 RPMs. If you're trying to save gas, maybe a little bit lower. Um, so it feels fine when you're driving like that, but when you really want to get on it, I showed you that earlier, you build some boost and the gears feel pretty good. I would say that first gear feels pretty good, but second gear feels, feels a little short. Um, not it's a big problem. Uh, third gear feels pretty normal, uh, maybe a tiny bit short and fourth gear feels very normal again. Um, no, none of it feels unusual. It feels pretty much similar to most other cars that I've driven. Um, but the clutch feel is definitely the highlight, I would say, of the manual transmission for someone, especially if you're gonna be new to driving stick or you haven't driven in a while and you're a little bit nervous about how difficult it's gonna be to drive because maybe it's been 10 years or 20 years since you've driven manual transmission. Um, it's a very forgiving clutch. It's the most forgiving clutch I've ever driven. Uh, the release point is not really high. I really hate high release point on clutches. It's not super high and it's not on the, it's not all the way down the floor. It's pretty much right snap dab in the, uh, snap dab. Uh, it's, I'm just trying to say it's in the middle. Sorry. It's in the middle and it feels nice. And it's a, I don't know if this makes sense to you, but it is a wide release point meaning it's not like you're gonna instantly stall if you miss the catch, the release point. It gives you a lot of forgiveness. It's also not a very aggressive clutch though. It's, it's soft, it's easy going, and it doesn't have a lot of torque, uh, what is it, sorry, what is it, what am I looking for? Torque, uh, torque braking, sorry. So if, you down, you know, if you're downshifting to slow the car down, one thing I've really noticed is you're not getting a lot of that torque braking by downshifting. When you downshift, it kind of slows the car down for like a second and then it just keeps coasting. Um, I, I found that a little odd, not a big deal. Um, so I think I covered most of the things about the manual transmission. And just to be clear, everything, uh, pretty much everything about this vehicle I'm, I'm very positive about. And I'm, I'm not just saying that to be like a shill or anything like that. I literally just had a car that I got, I gave up in like a, a month because I didn't like it, which was an Audi RS6 Avant. Um, um, I think it's a good place to cut it off. I spent a lot of time talking about the transmission and I think, I hope that you guys uh, appreciate that. So I'm gonna end the video and uh, let me know if you guys have any questions, thanks.